Hey friends, it's Stacy here with Stacy Makes and I own a small crochet business called Apple Tree Boutique. Normally I bring you videos about market prepping and making crochet plushies, but Bucket List 2024 had a make a wearable on it. And so I am going to, I just finished it yesterday. So I am going to show you some of the clips of the progress of this wearable that I made as um, as I was making it and um, as you'll see lots of things changed and then the last day or two I worked on this was at home this weekend actually and so I did not film any clips of me finishing the neck or the bottom tassels so I'm going to go ahead and insert all the clips for you to watch as you go along and then I will film the outro where I will talk about things that I learned, um, what I would do differently, and those kinds of things at the end. So enjoy. I went to a market last Saturday and there was a lady that was walking around with the most adorable, adorable poncho on. I mean, I even stopped and was like, that is the cutest thing. Where did you get that? Did you buy it? She had actually acquired it at a thrift store, but it was definitely handmade. Um, crocheted poncho with these this tassel fringe, and it was beautiful. So um, I got inspired, because originally I was going to do a hexic cardigan, and then I was like, oh, I don't know. So I just got inspired to do this poncho and just think it would be a cute little thing that, you know, when I go to markets and it's cooler in the mornings, you kind of wear it, take it off, throw it back on, and I kind of wanted a little bit of a boho -y look or something that kind of matched my um, branding colors and aesthetic. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape the intro to this video and show you what yarn I'm hoping to use. I'm going to put the, I'm actually going to follow a YouTube tutorial um, that is free, obviously, to follow along on. Um, she uses super bulky weight yarn. I'm going to use a worsted weight um, and probably a smaller hook. So her whole beginning where she, but she tells you that you chain um, in multiples of six, she does 60. I'll probably have to do like, you know, 98 or something because I'm using worsted weight yarn. So um, I have a lot of worsted weight yarn in my stash from doing knitting machine beanies. So I thought I'm going to go look to see what I have down there. And I have found what I want to use for this project. And I think what I'm going to do, and it, I might change my mind depending on how fast or slow this goes, but I think what I'm going to do is take this project with me to my work and it's going to be my lunch break make until I finish it. So it could be a how many lunch breaks does it take me to finish this. Um, granted I get you know anywhere from 15 to 20, 25, 30 minutes depending on if I eat or how much I eat um, every day. So um, let's just see how that goes and I might end up just bringing it home on the weekend because I want to finish it or get inspired. Obviously when I get to the tassel parts I will definitely have to bring it home to cut all those and attach them. So okay here is the yarn I've decided to use. Um, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. Um, this is the color Antique Teal. Um, it is a really pretty obviously deep tealy green color and I'm going to pair it with this variegated uh, the struggle is teal, so it has this teal color in it. So I'm hoping between these three skeins that I'm going to be able to make the whole poncho. I kind of want one that's pretty long. Um, hers wasn't super long. I'm kind of hoping that something that goes from my neck down, the V goes down about mid-thigh. So we'll see how that goes and um, just follow along. Okay, friends, I'm on uh, my first lunch break since I filmed the video, or the intro, and this is the pattern that I have decided on. Um, it is a cow neck crochet, like it says mini poncho, um, but it's, it's not like, it's not massive, it doesn't go down super far, I might add a few more rows to it, um, but this is what the pattern looks like. Um, I did change my colors since I taped the intro to get them out of my yarn bag. These are the colors I decided on. So you can see there's kind of a terracotta, a gold, and then the original teal. Um, I'm going to do, I think, um, okay, <clears throat> so I think I'm going to do the cream color, 
then do like one row of one of the accents, a cream color, and then two rows of an accent, a cream color, three rows of an accent, and then see where that lands me. Um, I think that will land me kind of at the end. Um, but anyway, we'll see how it goes. Obviously this is fluid. I've already changed the colors and the pattern that I was gonna use. I have started my um, chain row and just joined it. Um, and I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook. So let's see what I can do. And I'll check back in um, at the end of this lunch break. I have about 20 minutes. So I'll check back in and show you what I accomplish. Okay, friends. So I have made lots of blankets in my lifetime. Well, not lots, but I've done several blankets and I feel like working into the very first chain is just takes the longest time. I mean, it's anyway, just getting through the right loops and especially with acrylic yarn, if it's just kind of got a little bit of ply that kind of the strands are kind of coming apart and every once in a while, anyway, it just took way longer than it really should have taken. So my lunch break is up and here is what I have. Um, I have two rows. So I've done my foundation chain and I did a row of just it's treble crochets so that's even taking longer I mean imagine going from super tight stitches mostly single crochets to doing treble crochets with a really really light weave I hate tight things around my neck so I wanted to really make sure <laughs> that this was not tight <laughs> and um, so anyway I did a foundation row of treble crochets and then a one row of front post back post treble crochets so I have two um, the pattern calls for 20 rows of front post, back post. So I've done one. It calls for 19 more. So then you can, um, you know, fold it over and you have this, um, obviously this cow necked, turtle necked look. I don't know if I will do all 20. Me personally, me, I don't like tight things around my neck and I don't like a lot of stuff around my neck. And I kind of want to be able to wear it, even if it's just slightly cool. So I'm going to see how it shapes up and maybe do enough rows to kind of go up a little bit and kind of have almost like a mock neck um, instead of a cowl. So I might regret that later if I decide to do that. But again, this project's very fluid. This is all about Stacey making something that she wants that she'll actually wear. <laughs> so... Um, We'll see how that goes. I think it's a good size. Um, if I actually put it around my head, um, this is kind of where it sits. So um, I almost think that I maybe just another row or two, um, and that way it doesn't go out super far. And then I'll just get started on the bees. That way I can make more color and things at the bottom. So we'll see. Okay. So. Day one progress, basically two rows out of bajillions. So we'll talk to you in a little bit when I have more to update. Hey friends, it's day two on my lunch break, working on the cowl. So the cowl neck part, sorry, of my poncho. <clears throat> um, I've completed one round. Um, so I had two done yesterday and I completed one more and it's, you know, I was saying that I was gonna maybe cut this short and not do all 20 rounds and I still don't think I'm going to, but it does shrink it. So like um, one round up, from this kind of like pulled the other round kind of down. I don't know how to explain it, but it kind of the front post back post method kind of compacts the stitches down some. So it's not going, it wasn't doing it after two rows. It's now doing it after three. So I'm still thinking, um, 
let's see, maybe three or four more rows of this before I transition. So I think I probably have time to do maybe one more row on my break. So two rows again today. And then I think I am going to take it home. Um, I don't, I have a really loose tension with this hook and this yarn. I think I'm going to take it home just in case I feel like working on it, it's there. So I, the option is there. Um, and I will update you guys as I have updates. So thanks. see ya. Okay, friends. So day two update. I did two more rows just like I thought I would. Here they are. So let me pull this a little bit so I don't undo it. and loose. I think I'm gonna do like the end of my shoulders is right here so I think I'm gonna do a few more to get me out to the end of my shoulders like the picture so what are we thinking? Okay that's my update! Okay this is officially day let's say it's day four <clears throat> I did two days of lunch breaks last week, and then I took this home, and I only worked on it yesterday, technically during a lunch break. It was after lunch at my mom's house, um, and so I finished off the mock turtleneck kind of neck for it. Again, I decided not to do the full cow neck, um, thinking that if I do get it completely done and decide I want to do that, I can go back and add rows, I believe, to the top, and it'll be fine. Um, Anyway, so and then I got to the treble crochet groups of three part of this pattern, and this is where the increase is, where the B part will be, and I was just trying it on to see what I thought about whether or not I wanted to do another row of this cream color or go ahead and change the color. So I was just trying to decide if, I don't know how else that may be more like that, and then it'll be here. I think I want to go ahead and change the color. Um, I can't decide. Let's see. I have a lot of room to still change colors, so I think I'm going to do one more row of cream, which is probably all I'm going to get done today on my lunch break because the rows are starting to get bigger, so I'm probably going to add like one row a day and I've got like I don't know how many rows left to finish, so I'll check back in when my lunch break's over and let you know. Okay, friends. Um, my lunch break is over, sadly, and I'm going to give you an update on what I finished. And like I suspected, I got one row done. Um, so I am now, let me find the increase corner. Um, there it is. There it is. Okay. Um, anyway, um to find the the increase point so okay this is what we got so far one more row I'm glad I did one more row because um, it actually is the first row of going into the spaces between the triple treble crochet groups I'm not really sure what the official term is for that but anyway this is what we got and I am super excited about this I know that it's holy um, but I'm I'm actually super excited about that part because I'm actually really cold natured and so I layer a lot you know it's 70 degrees today and I've got a cardigan on and a shirt and a cami um, and I've got my space heater on in my office and it's 74 degrees in here and I'm still freezing so um, but anyway I like to layer but I also like the breathability of having holes in something like if I wear a solid solid really thick sweater that's not holy in some way it's like oh, sometimes just too much so I'm actually super excited that this is gonna add a lot of warmth I think and then you know obviously texture and stuff if you wear it and then but will also be breathable so I'm um, just day four update we'll see ya Okay, day five.
there, just the center. Okay, day six? Yes, I think it's day six. Um, today I completed the second row of the dark teal, and then I got, I don't know, a third of the way, not me, maybe not even a third, a quarter of the way through the cream color. So I think that's what I've decided to do, is to do two rows of this color, and then one cream, and then I think I will do three rows of the next color, one cream, and then maybe four rows of the next color, and then finish with cream. So this is what it's looking like. Let's see the back of it. Well, you can't really see the back of it. There's just bees down in the back too. I'm excited about it. That's what I got. At this pace, I think it's gonna take me, let's see what I got. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably at least 10 more rows. And I can only do about a row per lunch hour. Um, so I would say I'll do, I'll get to the next color before the weekend. And then depending on what I do this weekend, I may work on it a little bit this weekend and see if I can. <clears throat> so there it is. Super excited. Okay, day, I don't even know right now what day it is. I'm training people this week at work. And um, I have a chamber meeting this week. So I have some things going on that's gonna keep me from being able to crochet on my lunch breaks. But I did take it and make a few rows um, at my mom's on Sunday when we were there for lunch. So I made a little bit of progress and just wanted to check in. Um, I think if I, hmm, I don't know. I think it's going to be another couple weeks, really, probably before I get to the bottom. I'm going to do three rows of this mustard, another row of the cream, and then I think I'm going to do four rows of the terracotta pinky color, and then I'm going to do a row or two of the cream, and then all the tassels on the bottom. So that's my plan right now. So here's where I'm at. It's coming together. I'm already kind of regretting a little bit of like the looseness of the stitches. I wish I would have used maybe a smaller hook. Um, cause if I was going to steam this, it would probably be even bigger. And right now it's actually perfect. So I don't know that I'm going to steam it <laughs> just so that it lays like this. But anyway, that's where I'm at. <music>
day. I don't know how many anymore, um, but just super quick. Um, I didn't work on it at all this weekend, so I haven't made much progress on it, but um, I think I'll do four rows of this peachy um, terracotta color, and then I'll do a row of cream, maybe two rows of cream, depending on how long I decide I want it. I think it's there right now, because there's also going to be there's also going to be tassels, so I want to make sure that I have room for those to hang but not be down to my knees. So that's where I'm at. Hey everyone, a day I don't know how many now. I'm on my last row of pink and then I'm gonna go to the cream color and finish out however long I feel like it needs to be. Maybe, I don't know, two or three rows. And then I gotta do tassels and then I'm done. And so my goal actually is to try to finish this this week. Um, I'm off Friday and Monday for the Easter holiday, so I'm really hoping that <clears throat> I can get all of it done so that on my Easter break this weekend, I'm adding all of the tassels and stuff to it, and so that it's done for the next weekend's market. It's supposed to be probably like 60 degrees here on my next market, and it's outside, so it's going to be cold. So I'm hoping to wear it. It's, I love that it's like it's holy to like kind of let you breathe but it's warm like right now it's already warm it's warming me up so i'm just super excited about it and um i'll see how i feel about the neck and whether or not i'm going to add I'm thinking about tightening this up just a little bit uh, to kind of pull the neckline in um to maybe latch on here and do a couple <clears throat> a little bit of decrease maybe i don't like things tight around my neck and it's meant to kind of go out like this um Anyway, so if I wear it like that, it looks intentional. Yeah, okay, I'm super excited. See if I can back up any more so you can see it. See ya. Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, I learned so much making this poncho. So um, first off, what you did not see in the video was that um, obviously there's a lot of tassels on this thing. Uh, I have it here. Lots and lots and lots and lots. I mean, almost like three quarters of a skein of this cream yarn. <laughs> as a lot. Um, so those all went on yesterday. And then I have cutting mats and <clears throat> rotary blades and I probably need to steam it. So a few things, and then you also didn't see that I went back um, yesterday and I added, see this, this rose here above the ribbing. Um, as this got heavier, it <clears throat> pulled more and more and more down on me and it just looked like it had an unfinished neckline. And um, although I don't like things tight around my neck, I did definitely want to um, have it come up a little higher. I film a clip, which I'll show you in a second of me wearing uh, the finished garment. So. Um, I'm going to insert that footage now and, um, enjoy that. Hopefully you can, hopefully it turned out well, the footage I'm filming myself outside. Um, so I'll insert that here now. So I have been working on a, my first wearable for myself, um, this year. And I just wanted to share it with you. I have a lot more to share, including some things that I've learned along the way 
and things I would change, do differently. And I have a lot of clips of me working on this project uh, over the last month, month and a half. I'll have to go back and find out how long it actually has been since I've been working on this. But I finally finished it yesterday and I am just so excited. So I just wanted to share it. Obviously, it fits me. I mean, ponchos are kind of, would be kind of hard to mess up, but a few things I would do differently. Um, I would, the pattern actually called for a chunky weight yarn. Um, I have the pattern here, and let's see, it calls for, it was a size six hook, but it wanted you to use a, um, like a, chunky weight like size six weight yarn so like a lion is it quick and easy maybe lion's brand or something is probably along those lines and had i done that um and used the same hook size that i used i think my stitches would have been tighter um and i would have had a less holy outcome um in between these stitches so that's that is one thing and but i didn't have any of that and I really wanted to use stash yarn. Um, so I, I just did not want to go out and buy more yarn specifically for this project. Obviously I was inspired and I wanted to get started right away. So what my first thing I really learned was that if you're going to make yourself a wearable, one, be very intentional about the colors and the yarns that you choose to make the wearable out of. It is a lot, a lot of work to make a wearable product. Um, and don't just be so excited and jump in like I did and settle. I don't think I settled on my colors necessarily because I absolutely love these colors. Um, but try to be intentional about the actual content of the yarn, the weight of it, the colors. Um, and, you know, if you get started and you realize that it's bigger or holier than you really want it to be, instead of finishing the whole thing and spending two months of your life creating it, you know, let's undo it and let's just start over so that you can make sure that you get it right and that it is something that you that you really really love when you are done with it so um so that is one thing um i have a tendency to do that i just jump into projects i want to use what i have i settle a little bit and um so next time i do a wearable which i did say next time i do hopefully we'll get another thing done this year um i find a really cool vintage pattern for um a wearable that I think would be really kind of cool. So we'll see if I, if I end up going there. Okay. So that is, that is thing one. I would have used a smaller hook. I would have used, well, or maybe the same hook and, and heavier yarn. Um, the other thing that I think I learned along the way was to try to enjoy it a little bit more. Um, obviously it didn't take away from my market prepping, which was kind of the point of doing it over my lunch break, which I sometimes do market prep over my lunch break, but I was crocheting so much in the evenings and things that, um, that it would be a really cool project to take like on a vacation instead of like market prepping and taking stuffing and safety eyes and stuff. Like I have a week long vacation, um, every summer with my family that maybe that's when I take my wearable and I work on that, on that vacation. And that's just a cool memory to have of like the things that happen during your vacation and to get a really chance to relax and enjoy the process and not be overwhelmed by everything else going on around you or, you know, so on. So I'll probably do that in the future. Um, also I think I will, um, steam this and probably have to recut some of these as they are a little bit. Um, there are some that are kind of wrinkly. You can see some of them here. Um, so I'll probably steam that and, um, not necessarily block it, but definitely steam it, try to get those out and maybe recut the bottoms. Will I wear it? Yeah, I think I will. Um, our market, the reason I really wanted to finish it this weekend was that our market on Saturday, um, we're going to be outside, but it's going to be anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees, but we're going to be in the sun in the morning but in the shade all afternoon. I'm going to warrant a light jacket or something like that, but I thought this would be a really cool um, thing to be able to wear, like a conversation starter. Um, 
but also just be warm. You know, it's like wearing a blanket around you. So I'm really excited about that. So I really appreciate you coming onto my channel for my non-normal content. Yeah, this is not what I normally do, um, but I did really, really enjoy it. I, I really, it is just really cool to take a hook <laughs> and a ball of yarn and turn it into something that you can, that you can wear. And so I hope that this inspires you to just try it. If you know how to make amigurumi, you can pick up a hook and learn how to do a treble crochet or a double crochet and definitely make a garment. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this journey that I went on. Um, it was it was pretty cool how fast it came together, but yet slow. <laughs> so, but anyway, I hope this inspires you. Um, let me know down in the comments if you um, if you've ever made a wearable. If that is your thing, then and you make them all the time. That's it's amazing. I applaud you for doing so. Or if this inspired you to make one. If you have any questions, I am not obviously a wearable expert, uh, but I really did enjoy this process, and I hope that you enjoy coming along with me during um, this journey. So, thank you so much for joining me. Um, like and subscribe if you like this type of content. Maybe there'll be another wearable sometime in the future. Um, but I'll probably be back to my normal plushie making content very, very soon. And um, like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for being here.